Hello and welcome. My name is Merely Adequate, and you're here to learn about pulse extenders. So let's get going. The first one we're going to talk about seems overly simple, but it's actually something that causes lots of people lots of problems in their builds. A stone button will hold for that long, and a wood button holds like half a second longer. Now, that's technically a pulse extension from the stone, which is what we're going to use as our basis for today. But I wanted to point this out because if you use the wrong button, it actually can make your uh, creations not work the way you mean for them to. So there we are. Number one, the wood button is a pulse extender. The second pulse extender today is the comparator extender. The way it works is uh, when you provide signal to comparators in a loop, they will slowly degrade and die, but they will push through signal until they do. So it works like this. And there, there you go. Now you cannot combine these infinitely, but you can combine them pretty good ways. If you use the stone button though, you're only going to get about four up and four back. If you use a wood button though, you can get seven up and seven back. So when you do that, there it goes all the way up and back, and it holds for a lot longer than you actually think it will. You can do any combination of a, one set up to seven sets to get the exact timing that you need. This is probably the most convenient small early game. I mean, obviously you need, you know, quartz to make a, a comparator, but other than that, a small early game pulse extender. The third pulse extender today has a very unique purpose. It counts for five minutes, five minutes exactly. And the reason for that is it relies on how long it takes for an item to despawn. So what we're gonna do is push the button on the dropper. It's gonna drop an item onto a wood pressure plate. Be very clear, it has to be wood, not stone or metal or iron or gold. It has to be wood. And then down there, you'll see we've got a repeater just pulling signal out of the block for that the uh, pressure plate is attached to, and it will continue counting for five minutes. Now, we're not going to sit here, obviously, and <laughs> watch it go for five minutes, uh, but there's a very real reason for this. There are a few mechanics in the game that last for five minutes, like breeding and things of that nature, and it's always helpful to have a timer to maybe remind you of when you're ready to start over or, or go again. So this is a pretty handy tool because uh, you can set this and attach it to some sort of a, a light or sensor or timer and it'll remind you when five minutes are up and you can go again. So that's why I included it today because it does have a very particular use here in Minecraft. The third pulse extender today is by far the most impressive one that is here. I cannot take credit for it. It was made by uh, someone named Cortez Arino. Uh, he did an amazing job, and you'll see it looks very similar to an Etho hopper clock, because it kind of is. But it's not a clock, it's a pulse extender. The way this works is, when you press the button, three things happen. You turn off this uh, comparator that is locked, it kills this redstone dust, which unlocks that hopper, and it powers this torch allowing signal to go to its final destination. And then whenever the items in the first hopper, ooh, we don't want to count that long. Let's pull that out of there. <laughs> when the items in the first hopper get all the way here, they start going back, killing the signal, turning this hopper, excuse me, comparator back on, and resetting everything back to the beginning. You ready to see? Here we go. And then it'll count all the way over to 16 and then stop and move. Now, uh, the reason why that stack of 63 is in here, because there's a good little warning to know. You can fill up 64, 64, 64, 64, but here only do 63. If you make it 64, then the power that pushes back to this comparator is too strong and it actually messes up the whole mechanism. So there you are a very good adjustable <laughs> uh, pulse extender. Jeez, I'm, my blank, mind is blank, blanking today and I can't talk apparently. <laughs> uh, very good, amazing pulse extender. 
uh, I, I like to call it the not Etho Pulse Extender, <laughs> but no, it's a uh, Cortezarino, the Cortezarino Pulse Extender. I'll leave the link for him down below. But I think we should actually build this so you can actually see uh, how it goes together and not just have to guess by looking at it. Let's actually start with the hoppers. We want two hoppers facing into each other like this so that an item can go back and forth between them. Then you're gonna take a solid block and put one beside there and then here leave a gap and put one right here. Then we'll have a comparator looking back on this where the button will be. Great. Then we need a torch on the side of this one and a torch on the back side of this one. We need some red dust here on the top, red dust here in the corner. And that is basically it. In order to uh, have signal to our destination, we can put some signal there, some dust, dust there, and that's the direction of your destination of your power. And then you put in a couple items and you are good to go. Thank you, Cortezarino. This is amazing, and this is absolutely the clock that you all, or not a clock, the pulse extender you all should be building, unless you just need a teeny tiny little comparator one. Unless you are an amazing person and love aesthetics over function, and this disgusting monstrosity is perfect for your world, and then you wanna build this one because I made it. <laughs> oh, it's silly. It's ridiculous. It's exactly the kind of things I actually like to make. It works perfectly, uh, but uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> Let me tell you how it works. What happens here is when you push the button, two things happen. First, we push the redstone block over, providing power to wherever you need it to go. The second thing that happens is, is it causes the dropper to push out an item. And then the dropper will push us right into the spider web. You can actually have a couple, two, three, or actually if you build this taller even more, spider webs. And then the item will slowly move down. And once it falls to the trip line, it will reset this redstone block back to its current location and turn off the power source. You wanna see it work? Okay, here we go. Boop. Power is going there. We've got an item coming. Oh, actually, let's do this. We don't want to wait that long. <laughs> item is coming down. It moves fairly quickly, quicker than you think it would. And it's reaching the bottom. Boop. And done. All right. It works perfectly. It's just the kind of thing that I like to do in my Let's Plays because, you know, it's kind of silly and it's kind of fun and unique and, and it's enjoyable. Uh, however, I, I won't do a tutorial for this one. It, it, it's it, it's a little bit silly. So it, it, you know, I'm sure you can probably follow it from the pictures if you just like pause your screen. <laughs> if you have any questions about it, I'd be happy to answer them. But uh, yeah, here it is. My not etho, definitely not etho pulse extender thing. Yeah, great. Well, if I say Etho's name too many more times, I think he's gonna get all the credit for the video. So I'm probably gonna have to stop here for today. <laughs> I hope that you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions, please leave them below. And uh, most of all, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope that you found it adequate. <laughs>